Hi, and welcome to the Stop Chasing Skinny podcast, where every single Tuesday we interview a new guest to talk about topics to help you craft your own fit life. The title Stop Chasing Skinny comes from my own personal tagline of life begins when you stop chasing skinny. You see, I spent many years running many miles, taking many classes, and trying many diets, but none of those worked. So finally, I got down to the business of understanding what really matters. And it's not just about how much exercise you can do or how little you can eat. It's everything else that goes into it. So I created this podcast to help you so you can craft your own fit life. Every single Tuesday, you can listen to an interview with a guest. And now every Friday, you can listen to me a second time, where I take questions you have sent to me, and I spend about 15 minutes answering them. You can even feed your brain this nourishing brain food by listening while you're cooking, commuting, cleaning, walking the dog, or just about anything else, because that is how we craft a fit life. So let's get on with the show. And today we have Kylie Rieselman Larson. Kylie and I went to high school together, so we go way back. Um, She is one of the funniest people I know. Definitely one of the funniest fitness people I've ever met. Um, And it's funny to see where we both started out and now kind of where we both are in career-wise and fitness-wise. So the journey is, I mean, really, it's kind of been this like... um, parallel universe thing happening. So Kylie, welcome. And could you please tell the listeners a little bit more about yourself and your journey into how you got to where you're at now as a fitness professional? Well, thank you for having me, Stephanie. I'm so excited to be here. Um, My journey, yes, is very similar to yours. Just grew up very active and continued exercising um, in college. And Went off and started a career in advertising, but all the while, I still had this passion and love for fitness. What I thought I wanted to do was just be a yoga instructor and a specific yoga, um, Bikram yoga, if anyone is familiar with it. The problem with a Bikram yoga training is you have to like stop your job for three months, take a leave of absence. And, you know, I just started my career and that really wasn't, um, that really wasn't feasible for me. So fast forward about five years, I found a vinyasa yoga teacher training that, you know, was 200 hour training, but it was done on the weekends and like one night a week. So that was really my entry into um, teaching people yoga. And I got hooked up with a studio owner who had these amazing fusion classes of cycling, indoor cycling and yoga. So that got me into um, teaching group fitness. And ever since I started that path, it has just been full speed ahead, different formats, different classes. And then just recently, I have started personal training and online training and nutrition coaching. Super cool. So like I said, I mean, you can see where we both went from having your regular corporate America job into some fitness stuff. And something that you said um, one time, you said, you know, a lot of people just assume that they can just uh, be a yoga instructor and make like a normal living. And that's, I mean, you have to really piece it together, don't you? Oh, absolutely. I mean, seriously, don't quit your day job. In order to survive as just a regular yoga teacher, when I say regular yoga teacher, I mean you're just teaching classes. Um, I can't imagine how many in-person classes you'd have to teach per week. If you're going to make a go of it that route, what you need to really do is lead retreats, lead special events, workshops, um, lead teacher trainings yourself. And that is something I actually get to do now. I lead a teacher training here. But it is hard. Um, It's not glamorous. And um, I think there's only a a short lifespan that you can't actually do that if you are teaching, you know, whatever it is, 20 classes a week to, to get by, to be able to live. That is an excellent point because um, you see online all the time where they're like, oh my gosh, quit your job, live your passion. If you're not following Uh your bliss, you're doing it wrong. Well, you know, your bliss can turn into your nightmare real quick when you can't pay your bills. I don't care how much you love what you're doing. You're like, you're so tired and this job that you thought you loved, you now resent because you're working 
early mornings, late nights, et cetera. Yes. Yes. Excellent point. Thank you for sharing that because I think that that's like one of these big misconceptions. A lot of people see people like you and I on the internet, on social media and go, man, it must be nice to just work out for a living. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> we both have some experience behind us. You have to put it together. I love that piece of advice. Thank you. <laughs> cool. So let's talk a little bit about um, your own physical like fitness journey because you and I, we spent hours at that gym. Uh, I mean, girl. I think we like, like we did like relays on the bike or the treadmill or whatever. I mean, like we'd like high five and switch out. <laughs> Absolutely we would. Oh my gosh. We, so we both were swimmers. Yep. And I was just thinking, you know, be, when you're a swimmer, you've got to swim a long time in order to get good. So I think it almost instills this mentality of more is better, more is better. Hmm. So translate that to a treadmill by a Stairmaster, more is better, more is better. Um, so yeah, we logged a lot of hours there. I don't even know what we were doing. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't know what we were doing. We did not know what we were doing. Yeah. So but, now, okay. Kylie, how many hours a week do you usually train? Now? Oh, let's see. I have two days off. And when I am not off, my workouts are typically about an hour. So five days at one hour a piece. So five hours. Um, and maybe a little extra cardio in there. So let's say seven to nine hours a week at the max. Yeah. And I think before we were doing like two or three hours a day. <laughs> Absolutely. That is no lie. Yeah. That, that, is, that is no exaggeration. <laughs> yeah, it's not. It's embarrassing, but it's no exaggeration. Right. It's it's kind of funny these days. Oh, man. Uh, <laughs> and I'm putting pictures in the show notes of you, Kylie, because you're ripped. Oh, thanks. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, you you do do work out. Um, But so like that, that's something else that I think a lot of people have this misconception of. Um, They think, oh, well, I can just look like you if I just do what you do. Well, okay. So we're both, what, 37, coming up on 38. We've been doing this since we were like 16, if not before. And we've been consistent throughout our entire lives. So- can you share with the listener a little bit about what it takes to develop that muscle maturity? Can somebody just step right into it and expect to have shoulders like yours? Oh, absolutely no. Yeah, like you mentioned, I mean, I think back, I've been lifting weights for 20 years. Yeah. That's a long time. And so first of all, you know, like all the girls who are afraid to pick up weights because they're going to get big, you're not. And it does take a lot of time to to develop that muscle. You know, if you look at um, the master's divisions of a physique competition, the women that are older, and we would be in the master's right now, you know. Yes, we would. (laughs) Their bodies are rocking. The the women that are in the the figure and the physique, their muscles are way more developed than the girls that are in their 20s. And that's because it takes the time and the discipline and the dedication. Yeah. Yeah. So let's talk a little bit more since we're talking about these competitions. So um, a lot of my listeners know that I competed for about five years. And then, Kylie, you um, have competed for how many years now? I competed for um, two years, just two years. Okay. So, but those just two years, that was because you already had this really strong base and then you just took it up a notch to that next level. So let's talk a little bit about what it takes. So we just talked about like what your normal training routine is for the week. Now, what was it when you were actually training for the competitions? What did that look like? So when training for the competition, fasted cardio in the morning So think super early, like five o'clock for about 30 to 45 minutes, maybe an hour right before the show Mm -hmm. and then lifting for an hour. And luckily my schedule is flexible. So I would be able to lift midday and that would be, um, at least five days a week of lifting. Um, and towards the show, closer to the show, six weeks out, it would be, um, six days of lifting. So an hour of that. And then I would always have to do cardio again. I was never one of the people that did not have to do two day cardio. Um, at least at least six weeks out. So three hours in the gym. 
That's a lot. Pretty much every day. So that's what it takes to compete. A lot of people um, want to look like a competitor, but they say that they don't want to compete. But in order to get your mind to push your body like that, you, you got to have something going on because it's a 24-7 sport. And you can see how balance is way out of whack um, in terms of life, especially if you're juggling um, like a full-time job and things like that. So we're going to take a really quick break and we'll be right back. Hey, when's the last time you checked out the SK Fit Life recipes? We have a really great collection. Some of our own, some of others. Check them out. There's a whole library waiting for you. And welcome back. All right, so let's continue on with this whole life thing because Kylie has the cutest little boy. <laughs> <laughs> he is adorable. His name is Brooks. Some of you may have seen me doing squats with him one time a couple years ago. He's a little big for squats for me now. <laughs> you don't want to challenge Stephanie? Come Ooh. On. <laughs> That's, that, I would have to put him across my shoulders at this point. Yeah, He's grown. A carrying situation. <laughs> yeah. So I want to talk. I I want to talk about what it what it takes after you've had a baby. I don't have kids, I have fur babies. Um, so what would you tell a new mom in terms of getting pre-pregnancy bodies back, also taking into consideration this whole thing like, hey, I've been doing this for 20 years? Yes. Well, if I could go back, I would tell myself to even just settle down a little bit. Like your body is amazing and you are going to get back in shape. So don't stress about it and don't worry about it. Now, that being said, you know, you have to take six weeks off post baby. And I don't want anyone to feel bad about those six weeks off. Like your body needs time to heal. That's a traumatic experience, childbirth. Mm -hmm. um, but once you get cleared to work out and you want to, like I want you to feel like you want to, you know, start easy. Start by taking walks. Um, take your baby on a walk and gradually ease into it. Um, you can absolutely get your body back. Now, your body may not be exactly the same, but then we just have to work on accepting that and, and working with what we've got. I think weight training is an excellent way to do that. Yeah, and and you're right because weight training actually shapes your body, doesn't just try to strip off, you know, fat because whenever you lose that fat, you're going to lose some of that muscle too, right? Exactly. Well, and also what I tell um, pregnant women that are in my class now, like keep on working out. If you feel good and you feel comfortable, continue to work out, not only because of the workout itself, but once baby comes, your time is no longer yours. So really um, enjoy and be grateful for the workouts that you're able to get in while you're pregnant because it is a whole different ball game once you're a mother. There's a whole element of coordination. Like getting to the gym now becomes a, a, a process. You've got to find someone to watch the baby uh, or you got to bring the baby to the gym. So just be really grateful for the workouts that you can get in while you are pregnant. Oh, that's a great, great tip. And then any other tips for moms as far as getting back into the gym? Um, it, as far as the logistics go, are there any oh, things yeah. that you were like, oh, man, this was awesome. I, you know, I'm so yes. glad I did this. <laughs> so um, I, I was not afraid to bring my baby out in public, you know, so I understand that a lot of people are more cautious with that. And I respect that. However, there are a lot of gyms out there and rec centers, like community rec centers that have um, childcare where you can bring your baby when they're six weeks old. Because I know your 24-hour fitnesses and your more bigger box gyms, your baby has to be six months old. Oh, wow. Well, six months postpartum, that's a long time. So I would encourage you to do your research and find those gyms and rec centers that have the early age childcare. In addition to that, you know, there's all the like mommy and me groups or the stroller strides. Um, and that's going to always be an option. So I just want you to know your workouts might change a little bit, but it's definitely doable. 
Well, that's great advice, especially uh, because you're going to get that extra support as well, not just now I don't have to coordinate childcare as far as the the babies um, working out with you. Now you've incorporated it. Now you have other moms that are doing it with you. Exactly, exactly. And then just one more piece of advice, always bring diapers with you because Mm. (laughs) you're going to need diapers. Don't forget them. (laughs) Nobody wants to be called out of class because their baby just went to the bathroom. Yeah, that's a good point. That will ruin your workout, won't it? It'll ruin your workout. (laughs) Oh, my gosh. So let's talk about just a few things that moms can do with their babies, like different exercises. I know in that video, we did squats with Brooks. We did bicep curls with Brooks. Um, he really thought it was fun to see us doing like those surfer moves. Anything else? Giggle. Oh, I mean, anything that you could, I mean, if you can put your baby in a stroller and push them, do lunges with them in the stroller, go for a jog with them in the stroller. Um, you can do planks with your baby on the mat and you just hold a plank over him. You can do sit-ups while you're holding your baby. And every time you come up, you give him a cute little kiss. And that's just going to show your child that, Fitness is something that we do. You know, it, it, this is a part of our lives and it sets them up to have a great example of, of what fitness should be, fun and family friendly. That's awesome. So now that we just talked about planks and, <laughs> and crunches and sit-ups, for, for new moms, how do you start? How do you start that progression? I mean, don't do crunches for a while. That's mm-hmm. my advice. Start with the planks. And again, don't do this until you have your doctor's clearance to do this because you don't want your ab muscles to split apart. Yeah. So, but you yeah. can actually do that yourself by doing the wrong exercises, right? Yes. Yes, you can. So I'm a huge fan of plank work. Anything that allows you to or makes you draw the navel in and to brace your core and really hug those muscles in rather than push them out is going to be great. Um, if you have a bar studio around you, I think that the ab work that the bar studios do is perfect for um, postpartum moms. Awesome. Yeah, because everything that they do, at least in my experience, is like really pulling in rather than crunching. It's just a bunch of sucking in. It's very much based on physical therapy, and you can't go wrong. Or putting a ball between your thighs and squeezing it to really get the transverse abdominal muscle to engage because that's what you want to work. That's great because, yeah, I mean, I've always coached my clients. You you have to build those those really deep core muscles nice and tight before you ever decide you're going to work on the outside stuff because otherwise you've just set yourself up for disaster. Yes, yes. It's Good so to know. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. So let's talk a little bit about – Kind of, you know, like you said, you're you're online now. Um, you've been online for forever. You're just now offering services online. Let's let's be clear here. Yes. You've been entertaining me for years. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, so let's talk about um, uh, some of the things that you're seeing in the fitness industry right now. Like, what are some of the things that you absolutely love that you see happening? I love the efficient workouts that I'm seeing. You know, from tons of different trainers across the world. I love the efficiency of workouts. Um, I also love the fact that you don't have to go to the gym to work out Um, because there's a lot of people around the country that that can't get to the gym. I think like my family that lives in small towns, there's not a gym where they live. So they can do these at-home workouts and, and be in great shape. So I love that aspect of it. And there's a lot of great information out there for like people like me looking for continuing education. You could spend all day just learning about all different theories and methods. Um, So there's just a wealth of knowledge out there. And so where are some of your favorite places to find the information? Because I get a lot of clients that come to me and they're even more confused sometimes because they've been reading like some of the, um, you know, as professionals, I think we, we can see the spammier stuff, the, um, you know, the, the clickbait where they're like, oh, yeah, click on this. And basically these websites are selling advertising for the number of clicks they get to their advertisers. And so they're going to come up with stuff like the three 
exercises you need to do for the rest of your life and you'll never have to exercise again or, you know, like silly yeah. stuff like that. Where are some of the really good, solid information sources that you find? So really high level, BioLane, okay. he is amazing. If you want to understand how squats work, you need to go check out BioLane. This guy has done so many studies and so much research, this is where I could spend all day, bio lane. Okay. Um, and then also Brett Contreras, mm-hmm. the glute lab. He's the guy behind the hip thrusts. So much information. Yep. If you want to build your butt, you got to check out Brett. <laughs> it's He's true this booty squad i wish i was in texas because i would totally be a part of the booty squad yeah they don't call him the glute guy for nothing <laughs> yeah no this is true <laughs> <laughs> anything else or is that kind of um, and then my favorite like website is called breaking muscle.com cool it's very much crossfit based mm-hmm. um but it's really really good information that's awesome. Yeah, because I, I think that a lot of people, they get inundated with the uh, the information, and a lot of it is just kind of garbage. It's something that came across on Facebook um, because somebody paid for advertising, but really they just, you know, it's kind of spammy. Um, low quality. It's just low oh, quality. Yeah. So those are some great sources. We'll put all of those links in the show notes for sure too. Cool. So we're going to take just a really quick break, and we'll be right back. And today's show is sponsored by Memer Media Group. Memer Media Group is passionate about helping professionals in the fitness industry expand their influence and businesses beyond the confines of their local community. For the very first time in history, health, wellness, and fitness coaches can make a positive impact and earn an income from anywhere in the world. Check out Memer Media Group at memermediagroup.com. M E E M U R media group and welcome back all right so we talked about the things that you love seeing in the fitness industry right now let's talk about some of the things that you think need to change well you you kind of touched on it already with the wealth of knowledge or (laughs) the wealth of information rather (laughs) would be a better way to say it (laughs) um it seems like every day i mean there are so many health coaches online Mm -hmm. and you don't know what these people's qualifications are. You know, did they just sign up for some program? Are they simply just selling you something or do they actually know what they're talking about? And that's where you have to really do your due diligence as a consumer and understand what you're signing up for. That's great advice. Really great. So can you think of some like kind of warning signs? Um, when you know somebody's looking so maybe you're clicking through and you see some profile on instagram and you're like oh you know is this worth following are there some kind of warning signs that you see yeah well what i look for is first of all looks are not everything but does this person look like they should be giving you health and fitness advice Mm -hmm. second of all are they just selling you something is is every um, Instagram post or Facebook post about a tea or a wrap or a pill. That's another really good sign. Mm-hmm. Um, what else is something that I look out for? I guess also watch their presentations. If it's a video, listen to them because you can tell how intelligent a person is if they really know what they're talking about. Really listen and see, does this person know what they're talking about? You know, make a decision for yourself before you totally dive into whatever it is that they're selling you. Yeah, that's a great point. And something else, too, that I think a lot of people don't really realize. I mean, Nicole Arbor, she's a genius. Um, She enlightened me (laughs) on this buying Instagram followers in her Dear Instagram Models monologue which you guys should check out. It's hilarious. Um, (laughs) But a lot of people, you know, we have this mentality of, oh, well, if all of these people are following this person, they must have some kind of authority. Uh, People can be bought. You can buy followers. Yes. Yes, you can. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) Those are great points. Um, Anything else that you really would like to change in the fitness industry? 
Oh, I mean, there are certain like schools of thought. Every time like I'm looking for inspiration for like my motivational Monday posts on Instagram, I'll always come across some fitspiration or fitspo that I'm like, really? And it's usually um, people that are talking about working out in order to um, balance out the food that they ate. Like Mm -hmm. saying, I like to run because I really like to eat. Like thinking that exercising is going to just magically take away all the food that you eat or thinking that you need to exercise in order to eat. Mm -hmm. That's not that's not right. You need to eat because you're alive. You don't <laughs> deserve to eat because you ran five miles this morning. You know, yeah. it, not everyone's on that, but that really drives me freaking crazy. Yeah. And you're absolutely right. I did um, a series on eating disorders and disordered eating. And that is on the top of the list where it's quote unquote normal for us because we see it so frequently on yeah. social media. Um, but it's not just because it's normal doesn't mean it's healthy. Absolutely. So that's a really good point. Any other kind of like unhealthy behaviors that you see out there, like these kind of fallacies that we've kind of accepted as truth? Um, I think you you touched on it a little bit where you said deserve. I deserve this. Yeah. I mean, just thinking, um, you know, more definitely is not better when it comes to health and fitness. And you need your rest. Um, What else? That cardio, you've talked about, I mean, I know you live and breathe this, you know, cardio is not going to get you the body that you want, necessarily. Still helps to hear from a fellow cardio queen. (laughs) Girl, I know. I mean, I just think about how much time we wasted. Right? (laughs) What else could we have been doing? I don't know. But, you know, we had to learn that lesson the hard way, and now we get to tell everyone about it. Um, It's true. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Man, if I had audiobooks back then, I would be a genius. Can you imagine? Podcasts right? would be so inspired. Right? <laughs> <laughs> but also, let's see what else. Other fallacies out there. Um, well, and then, of course, it doesn't hurt to hear it again, that lifting weights will make you big. Yeah. No. Cupcakes if make my you My shoulders and, sh- and Stephanie's shoulders are too big for you. Don't worry. You're not going to have our shoulders <laughs> right. just because you start lifting five-pound weights. Uh, we've worked real hard for a real long time for these. Yes, and we have a couple of good genetics. With us. Yeah, yeah. There might there might be some pictures of both of us at like the ages of two and four with like delts. Yes, there might be. <laughs> yeah, I guess if you keep those two things in mind or those few things in mind, um, and also just to hit home, there is no one way for everybody. Yeah. Like we're so individual, and what's going to work for you is probably going to be whatever you like and that you're going to stick with. Yeah, that's a great point. That's like the best point ever. (laughs) If you hate it, it's probably not going to stick around. No, it won't. (laughs) Oh, that's awesome. So share a little bit more about what you are personally working on right now. You kind of touched on it in the beginning, but um, it's really cool stuff. I'm so excited you're actually offering training services now. Thank you. Yeah. So what I'm moving towards now, I love, I love to death my in-person classes. Um, But as a mother, it's really hard to find balance. And so when I was able to teach classes before, early morning and evenings, I can't do that now, right? I need to be home in the morning to get my son up for school. Um, In the nighttime, that's family time. So that leaves a small window of when I can actually teach classes. So what I've been moving towards now is this online offering because not only has my life changed in that way, so have a lot of my students. So now what I'm offering is I've started off with a, a six-week, I guess you could call it a boot camp. It's it's just online at-home workouts. It's a lot of hit stuff. It's some um, light light weightlifting. I want it to be available at home. So it's just up with three, five or eight pound weights. And then this is coupled with nutrition coaching because if your nutrition isn't dialed in, you're going to have a hard time seeing progress. And that's what I'm moving towards now. And then in the future, I want to be able to offer everyone more weightlifting stuff for the gym, because I know there's a lot of you out there that you know you need to lift weights and you want to lift weights, but you don't know what to do. And it is intimidating walking into a gym. 
I was intimidated the other day. I went to a different location than my regular gym and I was looking for a machine and I was kind of embarrassed that I couldn't find it and I had to ask somebody. Um, so if I feel intimidated and embarrassed, I can imagine how someone who doesn't lift weights on a regular basis would feel walking into this place. You're like, what is going on? So yeah, I'm just moving things to online and that way I'm able to reach more people. Everyone can do it on their schedule. I can do it on my schedule and everyone's happy that way. That's awesome. And I feel like it's more cost effective in that way too because you don't have to pay for an entire hour. You know, it's no. kind of shared costs between all the training and the group. Absolutely. I mean, and these people in my current group, they're getting more attention than a lot of like they're getting more attention than the people that come to my classes. They're getting way more valuable information and they're getting more contact from me than just 1 hour a day that they see me. Yeah. Yeah. Once a week, you know? Yeah. So well, and a it's, lot of things in their butt. And it's kind of those little in between times too, whenever, you know, like sure in the class they can work out real hard, but what if they have a question about whatever else? You know, because it's 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 the other twenty three hours in the day, right? Absolutely. And I, I'm really loving like this group setting, this online group where, you know, Nancy can pose a question and then Barb hops in and gives her two cents or, you know, Nancy posts this great recipe that she just tried and then everyone else is like, oh my gosh, I totally love that. And you really do have this sense of community, even though you are around, you know, the world. Yeah. Yeah. Now that's been the best thing is the relationships that are built. Yes. It's and, fabulous. Yeah. And it's kind of like your people. Like I found with mine... Um, that people gravitate towards me because there's something about me that they see in themselves. And same thing for you. You know, that's those people will. So those are your people. <laughs> yes. It's fun being around your people. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, this was so much fun. Speaking of my people. Um, yes. So yourself. much fun. Yeah. Because I mean, like I said, Kylie and I have we go way back. Um, it's crazy. I, I can't even <laughs> believe how long it is. Like high school does not seem that long ago. I know. But yep, <laughs> coming up on 20 years. Crazy. So, oh man, this was awesome. Well, Kylie, can you mention the name of your website? And we will put it on the show notes too. Yes. My website is kyliefityoga.com. Thank you so much. We you look forward welcome. to talking to you again to see how all of this unfolds for you. Mm -hmm.